In this screencast, we're going to use a banner image we created in a previous screencast, and we're going to add some text to it, and we're going to show some text, uh, some effects we can create around this text. To use text, we need to select the text tool from our tool palette on the left. So at the top, we have our move tool. Further down, we have selection tools, and we have some um, cloning tools and spot healing brushes and so on. And about two thirds way down, we have the type tool. Uh, so you can highlight that tool at any stage by hitting the letter T on your keyboard to activate it, or you can just click on it to activate it. Uh, I then move my cursor into the area where I'm going to type, and I click, and we see that I get a flashing cursor here, and the size of it indicates the size of the text. Um, up here I can change the size and the font and some other parameters as well. So the font is currently set to Arial, we'll try that, um, 48 point. Uh, probably the cursor there shows me it's probably probably about the size that I like. So I'm going to type in some text here. I'm going to put in wired. We'll just close that window there. I don't want to do that. Uh, we'll type in wired FM. Uh, and that's Limericks, oops, Limericks Student Radio station. We'll put the radio station on the lower line, so I just hit return as you would with a normal text document. And we broadcast at 99.9 megahertz. Okay, so there's my text. Um, I haven't committed to that text yet. I'm still in edit mode. To commit the text, I would go up and click on the little green tick mark at the top of the screen. Um, but if I want to move it around, uh, if I move my cursor outside of the immediate text area, it turns into the into the move tool automatically. So I can move it around. Now one problem we'll see here is that I've got white text with a white background, um, or at least it's part sitting on top of white background, so we can't really see it. Um, so one possible solution to that is if we go to our layers window here, we can see that once we created text, it creates a new text layer. So I could, for example, instead of using the normal blending layer as shown up here, I could use a difference blending mode. And that makes the text, again, if I move it around, we'll see. So if I, if I click inside the text to activate edit mode again and move it around, we can see that in difference mode, the text color becomes opposite to the color behind it. So it, it always stands out from the, the color behind it, so it's more readable. But it's not really what I want to do here. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to, uh, I'm going to commit to that. And I'm going to go back to normal uh, text mode. Um, one other thing here, I'm, I don't, re well, let's actually just, it's worth pointing out as well. Uh, be careful when you're editing text. To go back in and edit this text, I make sure that the text tool is selected and I click somewhere inside the text area, like that. Now I'm going to cancel my, I'm going to drop out of edit mode here by taking the cancel button up at the top. And I'm going to go back and just show you a common uh, mistake or error that you might encounter here is when you're going to edit text. If you click just outside the text area, uh, you start a new text layer instead of going into edit mode on the existing text layer. That can be uh, frustrating or irritating if it's not what you wanted to do. So watch out for that. So I'm just going to cancel that because I don't want that. Um, now what I do want to do here is I want to change my font. Uh, I don't like that font there, so I'm going to go for a more interesting font. So again, with the text tool selected, I drag my mouse across the text that I wish to change. And uh, I found a font in here, uh, Hobo Standard, I think it was called. We'll try that. Um, hobo standard, here we go. And it's a slightly uh, fatter or thicker text, and I'm going to commit to that change. Um, and I like that text. Uh, I'm just going to move it a bit. Now I can go into the edit uh, mode again and move below it to get the move tool active, or I can simply select the move tool with the text layer active, and that means I'm moving the text. Sorry, that was the wrong thing to do there to grab the text block and move it. Um, I'm going to add some effects to this text now. Uh, I'm going to add, uh, to add effects to text with the text 
layer selected. At the bottom of the layers window, uh, you'll see an FX button. If you can't see your layers window, hit the F7 key, and that toggles layers on and off. So there's layers gone, layers back. Uh, so I hit the FX key. This closes here, it's annoying me. Uh, I hit the FX button at the bottom of the uh, layers window, and I'm going to go for a drop shadow effect. And you can see a little bit of drop shadow here appearing. I can change the parameters, the distance, the spread, and the size, and so on. Um, I like to keep the distance fairly small. Uh, if I move the distance out, I get a very separated shadow. I don't really like that, so I'm going to keep the distance quite small. And I'll just leave the other parameters as they are, but you can play with them to um, adjust to taste, as they say. I'm also going to add a bevel and emboss uh, effect here. Um, and this, this, these effects, uh, because of the next step I'm going to do, they work better with white text. Um, so I'm going to click on bevel and emboss there and hit OK. Um, I mentioned there white text. How do, how do you set the text color? Well, with the text tool selected, and I'll go back to do that again. With the text tool selected, you click up here to set your text color. So you can pick various colors. You can slide this down here to get a different range of colors and so on. We can get continuous color instead of a set of discrete web colors by unticking that box. But I'm going to stick with white. Okay, so with my text layer selected, um, I'm now going to go back into my... Uh, sorry, I'm not going to go back into it. I'm going to double click on the bevel and emboss setting there. Uh, and that brings up the sliders that are specific to bevel and emboss. Previously, we were looking at the drop shadow sliders. Um, but I'm happy enough with, with what we've got there. You can, again, play with those and adjust to taste. So I'll accept that. I'll click OK. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just explain a little bit what this opacity and fill setting up here do. Uh, so opacity... Um, they, they both control the extent to which the text is visible. So the opacity slider governs how visible the text and the effects are, drop shadow, bevel, etc. Uh, so for example, if I, if I reduce that down, uh, everything is starting to disappear. If I reduce it down to zero, it's gone completely. So I'm going to put that back up again for the moment. Uh, and now we look at what happens if I reduce fill. If I reduce fill, it just reduces the text visibility, but it keeps the effect. So if I reduce the fill away down to, say, somewhere around 20%, I get a more subtle text effect. Um, and it really depends what, what you're looking for. Here, I kind of like that, but I'd actually like to reduce the shadow a bit. So I'm also, I'm going to go back now and change the opacity, which is going to reduce everything, including the shadow. So I'll bring that down a little bit. Um, uh, and then I might actually go back and readjust the fill slightly, put a bit more fill in, something like that there. Again, it's it's personal taste. So I'd be happy enough with that. One final thing we'll do uh, with this text uh, is uh, we'll warp it. So there's a button up here with the text tool selected uh, and the text layer selected. I can go up here. If I hover over this, it tells me it's the warp uh, text tool. And we'll just look at a, a simple example of it. I can go into various different styles here that allow me different shapes. I'm going to go for an arc. And when I go for the arc initially, it's quite a pronounced arc, but we can control the degree of arc. So quite a quite a, uh, a bendy arc there, for want of a better description. Um, I'm going to adjust this slider to, to make it slightly uh, less arced, if you like. Uh, and I'll maybe move the text down a little bit. Um, for precision movement of text or anything else, you can use the left, right, and up and down arrows as well as the move tool. Uh, so I'm happy enough with that. I'll click OK. Uh, and that might be my finished effect there.